hand selected, I think, uh, that party's hand selected. A short notice is yet. It's all been done a short notice. Before I go through the three things, I priorities, there's obviously others as well, for Leicester, I think that where we differ from other political parties is the concept of where we stand. One of the things you, can, you have to do before you do anything about transport, energy, uh, um, uh, natural environment, everything, is look at the economic side of the way the world works. Yeah. All the political parties, the major political parties, and I think the vast majority of the smaller parties on right or left, all support the concept of economic growth. The continuation yeah. of the growth getting bigger and bigger and bigger through the means of globalisation. The left obviously opposed to globalisation, but I think they still want economic growth. It is impossible. We have uh, economic growth at 3%, means you double the economy in 25 years. You increase it by fourfold in 50 years, 16-fold in 100 years. My little great-nephew will live long enough for his children to be alive in 100 years' time. It is impossible. Until we actually challenge this, at least in the Western world, uh, we probably would have to low economic growth in the poorer world, but we must stop economic growth. We need to look for a new economic model. That's probably beyond the, the realms of the mayor, mayor, elected mayor. But at least the elected mayor should be bringing this forward and challenging the people of Leicester and hopefully if he, get, he or she gets any uh, publicity beyond. Okay, my three priorities within Leicester is, uh, I think, along what Peter said about partnership. But I believe in decentralisation and listening. I was reading an interesting article in, uh, for any people in agreement, Resurgence, they did a whole thing on leadership. And it's about leadership as being, so it's a lot of leaders are heroic, they call it. You know, we are going to lead the uh, thing and save the planet. But there's also the concept of being host, that no leader has all the answers. Act as a host for ideas coming back. You've mentioned the universities, everybody. I think mean, a lot of people are ideas out there to work out it, work out how we can challenge this. The other thing is to give people a say. Two areas uh, we really want to promote on that. First of all, the equivalent of parish councils within cities. Yes. Uh, I mean, a lot of it is, is too big. The city has too much to do, and it can't concentrate on everything. The little parks uh, uh, near me where I live will get the rally. We would be the best people to manage that park if we had the share of the money that came from the... Uh, from the council was given to a parish council. We even did in our sector, our chair of a residence association. The other thing is on major decisions, I firmly believe in referendum, not only at national level, but at local level. There should have been a referendum for whether we have or do not have a mayor. Right, and we may have to have that later on. So the second thing is transport. I mean, I've got like cycleways, pedestrian officer, we like a pedestrian officer, but we, the only way I believe that you can really reduce public transport is go for a car-free city centre. That means you basically stop anybody with occasional, possibly people with disabilities, although public transport should be such that they, people will be happy to come in on public transport and have you know, maybe mobility available in your scooters or whatever by the bus stop. But basically a car-free city centre in conjunction with far better public transport. Because that is a one where public transport does go in. They all go, virtually all routes go into the city centre. That's the area where I think you can use public transport better. Uh, and so my third one, after the democracy bit and transport, but there are others, is, is energy stroke saving energy, and particularly in households. I live in a little two up, two bound terrace house. Loads of them have got uh, <coughs> entry along the side. Those entry walls are single brick. You know how much energy goes out of those... Uh, those houses. So we need a massive energy efficiency saving and then top that up with uh, green energy. I have PVs on my roof and I have solar panels. My is east-west facing so it's not the greatest. I'm running a small community centre, we'll get resources centre. We're the first of the five environmental city building awards. We have PVs on our roofs, we have solar panels on roofs, PVs awards, and we had water recycling. Uh, to pl flush the toilets. 80% of the to to toilet loose last year was from grey water. This can be done, it needs dynamic, uh, dynamism from the leaders, but it needs uh, support from the rest of the uh, lecturer as well. So it's a balance between, hopefully, inspired leadership, but listening to the people and bringing the people with me, with, with them, wherever the leader is. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff.
cities and that we should be using cars less. Now, we use the car, my partner has a disability, we have a blue badge. We also have bus passes that we can use to get into town and out of town. We very rarely use them. I have a push chair as well. Now, the problem that I find when I go on the bus, yes, I have a bus pass, but for colleagues and friends who use public transport, it's very expensive. I forgot my bus pass the other day. To go about seven or eight stops, it cost me £1.85. For a monthly bus ticket, it's £45, £46 pounds a month. The buses are crowded. They're horrible. There's no seat space. You can only get two push chairs on or a wheelchair on. They're not on time. Can I interrupt you a second? Can you ask yes. a question? And then we can I, go I on will. There I will. Because yeah. um, you haven't got five minutes there. Yes. <laughs> what I would like to know is, how can we improve the transport in order to get people to actually use it because at the present time, people don't use the transport and are reliant on cars because the transport is so expensive and so horrible and it doesn't run on time. How can we physically get to use it to make it better? If you go to Canada, you can go and Can I stop you there? Is that all right? Okay, yes. Let's get a question. Oh, so okay. Jeff. Well, I think the key to that is that uh, we have the buses with deregulated and Thatcher, uh, disastrous. I was talking to a councillor, Councillor Barber, uh, who was, I think, in charge of, uh, you probably know more of this Peter than I did. Well, in fact, he was, uh, I think, leader of the county council. I was on a transport Howard. day. Sorry? Howard. Yeah, and uh, I said to him, you know, just, I've never met him before, I'm just talking as we do, you know, this whole thing. And I said, you know, Thatcher, one of the biggest mistakes he ever made was. Uh, 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 deregulating the buses and he actually thought that and said probably right. It's a disaster. That's why it's very limited of, of what the local authorities can do about it. What we need to do is campaign for a re-regulating of the buses. And one of the things I would do, do you remember I said referendum? I would have a referendum I say, well, does Leicester want to regulate its bus services? Hopefully in Leicester, but obviously maybe bringing in, because obviously we come from Wigston and all places like that. So that's what I think is essential. We must regulate the buses, allow them if they can afford it to subsidise, but even if they didn't, I think even the Labour Party wanted to have franchises. So they operate certain franchises, so they perhaps a few routes together, that's one franchise. You say, how much are you going to charge for running that? I want this level of service, this quality of bus, this sort of reliability, unless obviously the you know, road works, which obviously is very in control, uh, and, and this sort of stuff. And another thing I, I get really angry when I use the buses, particularly in the evening, you, and it happened to me today, I came back from Coventry now with my, with my brother, and uh, uh, they, the, the buses, you're there at 11 o'clock at night for a bus, and it turns up one minute before, you're stuck in the freezing cold, they're around the corner reading their paper. You know, I mean, it's disgusting. It's the customer really gets a bad deal. Not in public I think they get bad deals on a lot of other things. So we need to do it, basically, re-regulate the buses are key to any improvement in the bus services.